Hey guys, welcome back to S2, and I am Sue. We're going to talk today a little bit about ratings of perceived exertion. It is a great way to determine two types of intensity that are very, very important for fitness programming. The first one we're going to talk about is heart rate training and how to, de how to determine your 100% heart rate max. Our experience is we see most people using some kind of algorithm like a 220 minus age and then some random percentage to determine how to come up with heart rate zones. In five years of doing heart rate training with thousands of people, we've never seen anybody that that actually works well for. Everybody is different. Your heart rate is a fingerprint. It's unique to you and it really doesn't have much to do with how old you are. So there's two ways that you can accurately determine the intensities involved in heart rate training. One is a submax, and the other one is to do a VO2 test. Most people don't have access to a VO2, so the best thing that we can do is determine our rating of perceived exertion, or RPE, based on our ability to recover. I like to do all these tests on an aerodyne because nothing will get your heart rate up faster and in a safer way. You could use a treadmill, you could use a spin bike, you could even use a rower. But I will promise you, uh, nothing will get your heart rate up as fast as the assault bike. And once again, if I do this on a treadmill and I'm really pushing uh, to a scale of a 10 RPE, a 10 out of 10, I, it's, I'm at max heart rate. So it's very, it can be very unsafe to be sprinting that fast on a treadmill for most people. So the way you want to do it, select your piece of a cardio, air assault bike, whatever it is that you've got, and start, get your heart rate up. Now most of you will probably be wearing some kind of heart rate monitor on your wrist. What you want to do is to get an understanding. Right now I'm at 1 out of 10. The goal is to find 10 out of 10. So as I am increasing the intensity, as I'm increasing the speed on the bike, I'm going to ask myself, where am I at now? I'm at a 3 out of 10. I'm at a 5 out of 10. It's very important that you, you, you feel accurately where you're at as, as that scale is going up. Now as you become more comfortable with doing this kind of test, you'll be able to get more accurate as time goes by. To a beginner, at the, you may have difficulty right out of the gate going, I think I'm at a six, I think I'm at a seven. Just ask yourself and be as objective as possible. Where am I right now? As your heart rate is increasing and you begin to really huff and puff, start doing sprints. Do 10, 15 second sprints. Go as hard as you can go and then take about 15 or 20 seconds after the sprint and say your ABCs out loud. A, B, C, D, E. And what we're looking for is it, can, it should be very difficult to connect A and B. So by the time you get up to a 10 out of 10 and you say your ABCs out loud, you are breathing heavily. It should sound like A, uh, B. You'll know that's your max heart rate. Then you need to record the three digit number of where you are. For instance, my max heart rate is 167. That's a 10 out of 10 perceived exertion rating for me. All right, 167. You're going to have a totally different number. You're going to have to use a wristwatch. We have a monitor up on the wall here at S2, so we don't really need those. But as soon as you get done, knock out your sprint, look at your wrist, determine the number, say your ABCs. Make sure you're at your max heart rate. If there's any room, if you're connecting the dots, A, B, C, you're not there yet. Push as hard as possible to determine max heart rate for cardiovascular intensity. Okay guys, so we figured out how to use the RPE scale to accurately determine heart rate zones. Now we're going to figure out how to use the RPE scale for a different type of intensity and that intensity is the amount of weights that you're using during resistance training. So I'm going to give you some examples here and hopefully not confuse the hell out of you. We're going to stick with our RPE scale of 10, 1 out of 10. 
If we use hypertrophy as an example, hypertrophy is our goal. We're trying to get our muscles bigger. We want to use a weight that is an RPE scale somewhere between a five and an eight. Tempo, incredibly important, moving the muscle to exhaustion. High, repeti high repetitions, eight or above. And I'm gonna use bicep curl as an example of how I might write the weights that we would choose to do straight bar bicep curl. Four sets, 12 reps, seven RPE. So if I'm doing 12 reps, it doesn't matter if this number says three, says 10, says 15, says 12. It doesn't really matter. The 10 is a max. It's how I'm feeling. That's the maximum amount of weight. So for instance, if four sets of 12 was a seven RPE, and I was using a 15 pound dumbbell, that probably means that four times 12 times a 10 RPE is a 20 pound dumbbell. The same amount of reps, different RPE, are two totally different weights. So don't get confused with the rep range and 10 being the repetition max. 10 is the max. That's how I feel. So for instance, if I did four sets of 12 with 15 pound dumbbells and I said that's a seven RPE, and then I did four sets of 12 with 20 and was it total exhaustion, that would be four times 12 times 10 RPE. If we think about strength for a second, we wanna be moving into a RPE, a perceived exertion of seven out of 10. The weight is much heavier. When I get done racking that weight, talking about a squat, seven out of 10, 10 being exhaustion. If I were to write five sets of five reps at an eight RPE, you're basically saying, I probably could have done seven reps with that weight. Once again, it doesn't matter, five, 12, 15, 20, the repetition range has absolutely nothing to do with the 10. 10 is just the max number, it's a signal, it's a code that I'm using saying that's the maximum amount of weight. So for instance, back to the squat, if you did five sets of five reps at an eight RPE and that number was 150 pounds, you're saying you could have probably done seven reps with 150 pounds. You've got room in the tank you can do more weight, you just don't. From a strength coaching position, if I were to write this eight RPE, it's because I don't want you to be moving a maximum load yet. I want you at an eight RPE, right? Not a 10 RPE, so if this were 150 pounds, we can, we can hypothetically say, you probably can do five sets of five with 170, 175 pounds. So I hope that this is making sense. Don't make it any more confusing than it needs to be. This is how you feel. And the reason it's so effective is, once again, you just don't know. On one squat workout, maybe 150 pounds was an RPE, but the week has added up. You're exhausted, you haven't slept, you haven't ate well, you haven't recovered. You put 170 pounds or 150 pounds on the bar the week after, and all of a sudden, you, you only get four reps with it. Well, we know that's not an eight RPE anymore. You're gonna have to drop the weight. It's how you feel on any given day. And it's what makes it so incredibly accurate because it prevents overtraining. So I hope that you guys have a better understanding of how to use RPE to determine heart rate zones and appropriate intensity levels with resistance training.